Okay, so welcome back to another video. So here today we have a little um, quick, it's also a nice um, combinatorix um, proof. And that says that for m and n are positive integers, we want to show that the partial sum of, um, so our upper index is m, of um, negative one to the power k of m choose k divided by m plus k plus one is equal to, so here we have the upper bound for n, is um, the partial sum of negative one to the power k of n choose k is equal to m plus k plus one. So when we think about um, this notation, obviously we all know that's the, you know, the binomial coefficients, which the highly you see in, you know, in um, any sort of combinatorics problems. And um, now if we want to figure out how to prove that the sums are actually equal to each other, there's, a, there's something we have to think about when it comes to, you know, that coefficient. So probably your first guess would be to start off is by using, you know, the binomial theorem expansion, which, you know, that's actually the way we're actually going to do this. But with functions with, um, of course, with the expansion, you want to choose carefully on your x and y values. Of course, you know, your x one has to be a positive integer. There's no doubt about that. But we want to choose some x and y, you know, variables, well, rather, you know, our choices such that if by performing that expansion, we actually get, you know, what we want. Um, however, you know, with just that expansion enough, I'm just going to say this, this isn't going to, um, this isn't enough to actually see that um, from starting with that binomial theorem that you're going to get to, you know, this destination. So we have to actually do a little bit more of a creative approach. But actually, um, this is interesting because um, when we're dealing with this, um, the trick is we actually are going to use integrals for this. So that's something I don't think you really um, expect, but it's actually interesting to see that actually integration and some sort of differentiation actually also is applicable when it comes to combinatorix problems. So that's um, first to see here in this video or rather in this channel. Um, but just from there, we're going to actually just proceed from, you know, starting with the binomial theorem, get away to how we can rewrite this such that we get this sum. And then eventually we want to show that there's a different sort of equality that equals the same thing as these partial sums. And, um, you know, we're just done from there. Okay, and you'll, you'll see um, from all my rambling if, in case you, um, I might have confused you, but let's actually just jump in. So if we actually um, choose our, um, well, how about this? First, let me expand this out. So um, I'm just gonna expand the, the left-hand side. The right-hand side is just basically the same thing as the left, but except, you know, your M and N are just switch. So suppose if I start with the um, left-hand side, so if I expand this out, Let's see, so negative one K, so M choose K, then N plus K plus one. Okay, so if we were to expand this out, then we see that, so if we plug zero, so, and then zero here, so this is zero choose K, or excuse me, M choose zero. M choose zero, and then this is N plus one. So we keep going further, so m choose one, then n plus two, so on and so forth. Um, so I forgot to mention, this is alternating, so this actually has to be a subtract. So subtract, and it, it alternates, again, this is an alternating series. Keep on going, so on and so forth, then we have that we plug um, m the upper bound, so m choose m, and then um, n plus m. So that's what our expansion from the left-hand side looks like. And again, as mentioned, the right-hand side is the same thing as this, so it's just except interchange that m and n's. So um, yeah, that's what we start off with. Now, if actually, if you do a little bit of um, choosing carefully, um, carefully choosing your X and Y for the, in order to perform this binomial expansion, what you get eventually, what it comes down to is we can actually say that for the expansion, one subtract X, to the power m, or in other words, if you actually just substitute this back for the um, binomial um, theorem definition well, from there, that formula. So we just plug in, so I'm just write this binomial <laughs> definition like this. So we have m choose k of, um, now we say one for x, so this will be one to the power m subtract k, and then multiply by, so it's a negative x, so negative x, and then to the power k. If I expand this series out, so let's see, first we have, um, so starting at k is equal to zero. Anything for, you know, this could actually be disregarded in the expansion because one to any power is just always going to be one. So it's really, we gotta pay attention to this and the, you know, coefficient itself. Uh, I'll, write, I'll write it in this sense. So I'll put this as expansion of m choose zero, 
then we subtract this with m to the power or m choose um no no that's right because if you plug zero then you're gonna get that it's just one so that's fine so then subtract m choose one then that's multiplied by x over here add this with m choose two then this will be um x square keep going so on so forth then we have that this is just alternating so it's negative one to the power m and then i'm um, left with it's just m choose m then x to the power m so that's nice so we're getting somewhere here so now let's um make things a little bit um so of course obviously we see that we can't really do much so why don't we actually just multiply um an x times x to the power n to our binomial expression expansion so one minus x to the power m multiplied by x to the n so just do this each term wise so simply it's just equal to m to the m choose um m choose zero then x to the power n then um with exponents just you know n plus you know one n plus two and so on and so forth so minus um so this is one um what is this n plus one then plus m choose two x to the power n plus two we keep on going on so on and so forth then we have negative one to the power m then m choose m then x to the power n plus um m plus n we're kind of getting somewhere just a little bit if you notice what we have over here then actually and then this is where i said the integral comes in so what we're going to do is we're actually going to integrate both sides within our bounds from zero to one so we have the integral from zero to one of one minus x to the power m then times x to the power n dx so we just, um, obviously this would be easy to see that this is just using the power rule. So add one, then divide by that exponent. And then we just plug one for X. So everything for one is just going to be one to the power something. So one, so that's okay. And then zero is just zero. So all we're left with, so if we um, do this, um, you know, shortly. So we have M choose zero, then divided by N plus one, then add this or rather subtract since this is an alternating series. So subtract m choose one then n plus two add this with m choose two of um divided by n plus three then we just keep going on so on so forth then we're left with negative one to the power m of um m choose um m choose m and then divided by n plus m plus one now you'll notice that that's exactly what this is. So we see that this integral is actually going to equal this partial sum. Um, so let me actually do a little bit of just, you know, notation labeling. So I'm just gonna call this, um, well, this integral really, I'll call this S1, okay. And then um, in a similar fashion, and I'm just gonna skip this, um, the same thing over here, and you can actually check this yourself, but if you actually do apply the same method for the right-hand side, you're gonna get exactly the same thing over here, except, you know, you just interchange your M and N, you know, variables. So it's just flipped, in other words. So let me put it like this. So similarly, the integral from zero to one of one subtract X to the power N, and then times X to the power M dX, is um, equal to, then I'll just write in this, this same expansion over here. So um, n k is equal zero, negative one to the power k, then what is it? n choose k, then divided by m plus k plus one. And then how about this? I'll label um, this S2. So this integral over here is, um, this integral over here is S2. This is actually um, make things a little bit easier for us and eh, sort of, well, maybe to you guys, depending on if this is still um, giving you some confusion on how to proceed forward. But really in general, we have shown that this is S1 and S2. So in other words, in rewriting this, we say that S1 is equal to this integral over here. So I'm just writing the same thing, one subtract X to the power M then times X to the power N DX equals this integral, which is that right-hand side just from this equality, then one subtract X, then N, and then times X to the power M DX, which is equal S2, which we want to show that um, these two equal to each other as you know the partial sums are the same with these integral. But it's actually not that difficult to see because what we can do is we'll do a U sub. So we'll let U equals one subtract X. And in other words, DU is just equal to negative DX. Okay, then if we just plug S1 back in, so S1 is just equal to, how about this? Yeah, I'll just rewrite the same thing as before. So one minus X and then 
M, then X to the power N DX. Simply just plug in that um, substitution over here. So let's see, we have our new bound. So I'll plug one, so this will be zero, and then over here will be one. This will be um, now um, U to the power M, then some, set something for X. So this instead will be one minus um, U to the power N, and then negative DU. So just divide the uh, negative both sides. Okay, then what I can do now is, because we have to flip the bounds of integration, zero and one, but then the negatives cancel, so that's fine. So at least we're back to the positive. So now we have um, zero to one of, now we have um, u to the power m, then one minus u to the power n du, but simply, these two are the same thing because simply, it's, this is just in place of a dummy variable. So this can just, and with multiplication too, you just, you know, interchange that. So zero, one, so this is the same thing as one subtract x to the power n um, times x to the power m, which is equal to s2. And so therefore we actually just finished the proof. So just like that, we make things a little bit easier for us. S1 is equal to S2. So S1, I'll just put it like this. So therefore we have shown that S1, which is this partial sum on the left-hand side, is equal to, I guess it's also good to uh, put that distinction saying this is um, S1. So I'll put S1 over here and then um, over here, this is S2. So S2, okay, that's a little better. Therefore S1 is indeed just equal to S2. And so we are done with the proof. And just like that, um, easy peasy. All in the blue box. So this is actually pretty fun if um, you say, if I say so myself. So um, if you get something like this, then that was awesome. But if you ran into a little bit of trouble, um, hope this solution actually gave you some, you know, um, idea on how to approach, you know, combinatorial problems like this, for example. So yeah, that's uh, pretty cool if you ask me.